Uh, good morning. Uh, how do you hear me in the back? Okay, great. Um, so uh, this talk uh, will be about software collections. Who does know what software collections are? Great. So why are you here? <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry, I will tell you some news from the last year, for example. So my name is Honza Horak. I work in Red Hat and uh, uh, except software collections, I'm also involved in databases there, uh, in Fedora, in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So, uh, especially for those who are uh, sysadmins or or uh, angops guys, uh, you probably need to install some uh, specific version on an enterprise Linux. How do you do it? Uh, well, it's not that simple because um, because uh, enterprise systems usually ship only one single version of one package or one software, uh, one application, but users and, for example, service providers usually require more. And the problem is that as soon as you install new version of some application, you can break and you often do break all the stuff that depends on this application. Um, so I will tell you that it is possible. Uh, it is possible to install new version of the application even on enterprise Linux like uh, CentOS 5, 6, uh, Rails 5, 6 or even uh, yeah, of course, even seven, but uh, there are probably uh, recent enough versions. And I will tell you from the beginning that there are some borders with this uh, uh, concept, because from the beginning it was said uh, that this solution is only focused on RPM packages. And what is good news for you is that it was designed to be very simple for use and very simple to uh, package uh, <coughs> packages using this concept. But also, uh, if you don't like RPM, you probably see you will probably see the same uh, disadvantages of the software collections as well because it's based on RPM. So let's see what are the principles. Um, so. If we talk about software collections, we usually talk about stacks. So stacks of packages, we don't usually include one package into the collection, we usually include more packages. So in case of Ruby on Rails, it would be one software collection. In case of Postgres, it would be the server and some tools or extensions, extensions for the server. So it will be called one, one software collection. Uh, except those uh, packages that we really need in the collection, sometimes we need also some dependencies that are not in the base system. For example, they are in the base system in older incompatible version or they are just missing there. So we include also these missing dependencies into the collection. And then there is one special package in the collection. In every collection there is one and we call it map package and it actually includes or defines and describes the stack itself. So let's look closer about the meta package. Uh, there is one meta package which is called the same like the software collection and it co contains no files. It just uh, pulls dependencies for the collection. You will see it uh, later. Then there is a runtime package uh, that actually ships all necessary files. Uh, you will also see it later. And there are two packages for required for building packages. The first with uh, build uh, suffix is necessary for building packages in the collection. And the second one, STL devel, uh, it's necessary for building packages, or sorry, for building dependent collections because you can have one collection and another collection that actually is dependent on the first one and that this, this, this package is actually needed for it. So what's the whole magic 
uh, behind the software collection. If you want to install, well, this is this is generally uh, th these are generally rules that if you want to install some new version of a package that is actually in the base system, you need to solve three things, three conflicts with the base system. First conflict uh, on the package names level. So let's see how the software collections work here. This is the listing of the uh, uh, of the RPMs installed if you install the software collection Postgres 9.2. And you see that every package is prefixed with the collection name. So the fir first four are the meta package uh, sub packages. You usually don't need uh, the fourth one for runtime. And the second one, if you don't build any new packages, so yeah, you will need just the runtime, which is installed automatically, and the first one. Then there are some functional packages that you actually, uh, those packages are those that you actually created the software collections for. And this last one is example of the dependency which is missing, for example, on the uh, base uh, system. So it's also prefixed with the software collection name. So we have solved the first problem. Then second problem is conflict on the file system level. So this is example how uh, files in the packages we saw earlier uh, are included in. So you see that all files in software collections are located in slash opt. Then there is a vendor, name of the collection, root for like specifying that here will be all the files for the collection. And then there is uh, the same uh, like structure like you find in the root. So slash user slash bin for binaries, etc. You will also see that uh, there are some special files uh, like init script. Uh, these need to be located in the init, uh, init D directory. So we can't just include it in the slash opt. So what we do to not conflict in the base operating system is that we use the prefix in the name. That's simple and it works. The same for some special files or uh, for pen D or, or system D unit files, etc. cetera. Um, if you already use software collections, you'll probably wonder why here is var slash var slash opt and it's not uh, opt slash something and var. This is the new new schema that we started to use because it's actually compliant with the uh, compliant with the file hierarchy standard and it's actually more correct. Uh, so yeah, that, that's actually how the new version of software, uh, software collections will look like. So second problem solved and the last problem, we also have some RPM metadata like providers and, and requires. So we also need to care about these. Uh, these are some examples uh, generated automatically by RPM. Uh, there can be also some generated by packager. For example, in Python, it's quite common that every Python module provides some Python uh, quotes or, or I don't know, uh, name of the module. So even for this, um, requires uh, or provides um, defined by hand, you need to ensure that they won't conflict with the base system because otherwise if some package would need just Python uh, setup utils or what, what it's called, um, then you can't uh, install the package from the software collection because, because it, it will be installed in the ops uh, RH. So it won't be actually visible for the system. So, yeah. Uh, so as soon as we have solved this, these all three uh, conflicts, we are fine. So how do we actually do it uh, on, the, uh, on the packaging side and on the runtime side? Uh, so there is one package which actually does all the magic. 
uh, it's called STL utils. And it's divided into the runtime part and build time part, which is called STL utils build sub package. Um, the news from the last year uh, is that the STL utils uh, moved uh, to GitHub, so it's much easier to contribute, to see the changes. So uh, join, join the upstream if you want. And let's look how it's actually used uh, on the, well, from the user's point of view. Installing is, well, there is, there's no magic. There is no, no difference between usual install, uh, well, if you install packages usually. I just don't need to install every package separately. I just, uh, I, I can just run yum install and name of the collection and all same packages from the collection like the minimal set of the collections will be installed. So in case of the Postgres, we just said, okay, so if one, someone wants to have Postgres, he probably wants a server, so that's how what, what it will look like. And uh, how to use the packages in the Slack shop? Well, it's really that simple. <laughs> uh, like this. Uh, if you want to use a binary from the software collection, you need to use STL command, then uh, keyword enable, name of the collection, and then the whole command. You see that if I don't use it, uh, the system doesn't actually see the collection files and collection packages. What's behind this is really simple. Uh, the STL command only defines some environment uh, variables. The most important is probably path. So as soon as you define the STL enable something, the path will be the path in uh, slash ops will be preferred from the system one, and it really works. If we talk about daemons, starting of the daemons uh, is pretty much the same. You just need to use uh, correct name of the service, and you are basically done. Enable works the same, like uh, enabling the service after restart. No big, uh, uh, no big difference. So I promised some new features from the last year. So the new STL utils uh, includes one feature which allows you to use a uh, collection even if you mount C slash OPT. Um, then there is one special thing which was actually discussed from the real beginning and that the connection is environment modules because if you see how it actually works and for those who, who know environment modules you actually see <laughs> that it works pretty much the same so yeah uh, from the beginning there was some well uh, we thought that, that there will be some cases where environment modules wouldn't be uh, the best choice now it seems like we can actually use the environment modules in the backend. So the STL command will actually uh, call module load uh, in the backend and um, it will actually set up these envir environment modules. What's great about this is that you would also you could also use module load and uh, name of the collection instead of STL call. So yeah, it will bring some new uh, uh, opportunities to you. And as I uh, said earlier that the concept was designed to be easy for use, uh, but also for package, for, for use by packages. So let's see how the simple meta package looks. And I can't say there are some much more complicated meta, meta packages. Um, meta, meta packages are usually very simple. Um, there are some requirements defined. Uh, as I said, 
there are requirements for packages that I want to be installed after I run yum install and manual the collection. And there are some special macros. It's not important right now because it usually does everything for you. And there is the environment uh, specification. This is for the older way for the script that actually changes the environment. But if you would uh, like to use the mo uh, environment modules style, it will be basically the same. You, will, you would just here define the, the environment module config or how it's called. Then that, that's basically it. Also some uh, macros for including parts so you don't have to um, do it yourself. So it's quite easy. And if you want to build actually the collection, these are all the steps you need to do. Really, it's, it's that simple. You need to install uh, the SCL utils build because you need some special RPA macros for Sapphire collections. Then you build the meta package as you usually package without, you, ju you, you just need, need the macros from this, this uh, SCL utils build. That's the only difference. And then uh, there is a tool that converts usual spec file for a package to SCL enabled uh, spec file uh, that actually adds some or few, few macros in the spec. And finally, you build the package with uh, defining what the software name is, because it's usually, it's, it's possible to change the name. Uh, it's, it's not hard coded in the spec file. It's, it's necessary to define it. But please, if you uh, need it, uh, uh, if, you, if you really want to do nice packages, it's really recommended to use mod because otherwise, if you, for example, install this meta package build, you will spoil your RPM environment and you can then see some weird packages like Python 3.3 dash Postgres. So what, 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 what does it mean? Uh, yeah, it, it happens. <laughs> So just please use mock and you'll be safe. So let's also see what uh, the tool uh, spec to SCL does. Uh, if you, for example, download the package from Koji, Fedora Koji, and you run it to the spec file, um, it pretty much adds the following things. It sometimes it needs some correction, but it's really, well, quite readable because, uh, for example, uh, if you if you build package for Python stack, you will probably need to have the build requires to set up to the packages from the uh, from the stack. So, yeah, it, I think everyone who reads the RPM spec on daily basis, he can read these, this as well. So it's really about adding few macros and it's usually done. <coughs> uh, this is also important for uh, some packages that the build phase and the install phase need to be run uh, in the software collection environment, so with the software collection enabled. So Sometimes it's, it's, uh, it requires a bit more because, for example, Python stack uh, defines some macros to be easily, uh, so these macros can be easily used. Uh, so you need to care about macros defined by the package devil um, package and, <laughs> sorry, Python devil package. So. Uh, but on the other hand, you will end up with pretty much the same spec file. Uh, so as, as you saw earlier, then you, you can uh, use the same macros here. You don't need to change anything because it will be uh, changed already in the Python 3.3 build package, for example. So what I played quite a bit uh, with was the packaging daemons uh, to the software collection. So um, 
Uh, but but in, the b in the end, it turned to be quite easy, even packaging the daemons, because uh, except the changing the name, I just need to use this one file, uh, th this one line in the in its CSV in its script, or change the exact start macro or, or variable <laughs> uh, to use SCL and uh, then uh, the binary itself. So even in the system D, the daemon runs in proper system environment while with proper uh, environment variables defined. And it really works that simple. And in the end, we need to also care about Silinux. But fortunately, there is one feature in Silinux that allows us to uh, define equality between uh, while context uh, definitions. And this, this uh, particular command just says that everything which is under OPT vendor PostgreSQL root should have the same Linux context as it would be in the slash one in, in the root. And while well, using some resto recon to um, work around some issues with older uh, semination and policy tools, it, it works also quite well. Uh, then there is a way how to extend uh, the collection because, uh, for example, you can get collection with 10 packages and we want to add a few more. So there are probably, well, there are two ways how to do it. You either want to you, uh, build your package inside the collection or which is better to, well, the second, the second way is better to the cases where you want to ship the collection out also is to create a dependent collection. So you will call all your um, new, collect, new new packages under your specific name. Uh, yeah, and uh, it, it is also, um, uh, it is also, also not, not that, that uh, complicated. Uh, there is one uh, article about this for the Python, which is probably the most complicated one, but uh, it's also uh, doable, and, and I, I don't think uh, someone who knows RPM would have big problems with it. So if you want to extend some collection, read this uh, blog post from Svalek, and uh, you should be fine. So what our collections are uh, available yet? Uh, there is a product in Red Hat, which is called RHSCL, and there are quite few uh, collections already. But uh, what we struggled, what we have struggled so far a bit, was to create some community when uh, some well, users want uh, software collections in Fedora on, or CentOS, or they want to contribute. So this is also a bit news from the Last year, uh, there was some progress in the Fedora. Uh, there was also special interest group set up in CentOS. Uh, so, <coughs> yeah, so just join those communities if you want. Um, uh, in in CentOS, it's it's well improving quite quite fast, I would say, and also Fedora already has uh, the guidelines uh, approved, uh, as I uh, heard yesterday. So that's great news. And I'm not sure if it was ready for, for uh, the last year from, for, for them, but now it's <coughs> quite in good shape. This softwarecollections.org page, uh, which actually serves like the central point uh, for contribution, uh, con contributing for the community around software collections. And there are these two uh, important uh, paths, the guide for uh, documentation, how to build your connection, uh, collection, how to use your collection. And it's also possible to find already built collections for CentOS, uh, maybe even Fedora. And 
you are also welcome to submit your own collection to be included in this directory. So feel free to do it. Yeah, and that's probably all from me because it should be short today. Um, are there any questions? Yes. So there is a, uh, sure, so the question was about how the SC spec to SCL tool knows where to add the prefix and where not. So not to bother. So there, uh, there is no. There is uh, this option. I actually didn't use it, but I saw there is some, which uh, you can specify the packages that are actually part of the collection and which are not. So that should do what you are asking for. So the question was about what's the process for adding new collection for the, uh, I think you meant the software collections org, right? Yeah. So uh, what I should mention probably is that all the collections uh, built for this site are built in the copper, which is, uh, I can show it shortly, is copper.fedoraproject.org. Uh, you can build whatever you want there unless it, uh, conflicts with the uh, licensing guidelines of Fedora. So you don't have to follow actually all the packaging guidelines here. You just need to have your Fedora projects ID or how it's called. Uh, so in this tool, and there are so also some mm, guidelines how to do it in Copper, how to build a collection in Copper. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and Right, and there is then uh, some op uh, way to log in and, and submit a new collection for the software collections org. probably didn't catch the uh, what, what ah right so what problems can uh, SCL not solve so uh, so the problems with Apache well Apache and Python well, sorry, P Apache and PHP probably works quite well. Uh, there is a Remy who is author actually was the of, uh, for the collect connection of these two. So you can probably talk to him as well. Uh, but well, for example, uh, separating uh, the processes from the system, I don't know. It probably depends what you want to what do you want to be solved by the software collections? It's probably solves what we, what we need. Uh, <laughs> it depends what you expect. Well, I, I can't answer for that. So I think we are over, so thank you very much, and I will be here for <laughs> the reflections.